back. This is attorney Thomas Burton, and you'll see tonight I'm coming to you live from California. Just kidding, but it's a nice backdrop on this uh, rainy evening. So I just found a great resource for small businesses about the newly passed coronavirus Emergency Relief Act. You may have heard this was passed by Congress last week, the fastest uh, bill, largest and fastest bill ever, and the president signed it Friday. But the lawyers have been pouring through the bill, looking at the provisions to see what it means. And the long version is Coronavirus Aid, Relief, and Economic Security Act, but they're calling it the CARES Act. So there's this great handout from the U.S. Chamber of Commerce, and I'm putting the link in this video, but they've got a four-page handout that distills down the basics of how this works for small businesses because I was reading some of the law firm blog posts on this, and while they were helpful, they're super long and detailed. So if you want a quick primer, I'd look at this U.S. Chamber handout and I'll put the link in this video, but they're calling it the Paycheck Protection Program and basically the Small Business Administration is going to make loans to small businesses during this shutdown time from coronavirus. And so loans are one thing to get you through the crisis, but what I really saw in here when I was reading it is that there's a provision where the loans can be forgiven if borrowers maintain their payrolls during the crisis. So not only can you get the money uh, now for cash flow, but you could have it forgiven if you follow the process. So that's the good news because uh, you could turn a loan into a grant essentially and not have to pay it back at the end because even when business is open, they're gonna just try to be getting going again, right? And getting that cash flow going. So basically, if you look here on the first page, um, it goes through who's eligible, am I eligible? And I won't go through all the factors, but they're defining small businesses as a business with fewer than 500 employees. So that's the factor test right there. If you have more than 500, you're not gonna be eligible for these loans. And under this program, it's $350 billion to the SBA. And the SBA is still working on guidelines for how to administer this. So I don't even think anyone has it, banks are lending yet, but they're trying to do it fast. So if you have 500 or less employees, uh, you meet the test or a small business that otherwise meets the SBA size standard. So they probably have some other standards you can look at. But in addition, a nonprofit can qualify, a 501c3 with fewer than 500 employees, but this is what I thought was really good and unique is an individual who operates as a sole proprietor can qualify. In addition, an individual who is an independent contractor can qualify. So, you know, a lot of folks run their own businesses and they're either a, a chiropractor or a carpenter or a plumber. And sometimes those guidelines would say, if you didn't have all these employees, you didn't meet the definition but they can qualify under this act or even someone with just a couple employees. Um, and it specifically says an individual who is self-employed who regularly carries on any trade or business. So again, you think of a carpenter, plumber, electrician, a tribal or business concern or a 501c19 veterans organization. So they drafted it broadly to help a lot of people. And just a reminder, 500 employees includes all employees, full or part-time. So then here's a quick rundown of what the lenders are looking for. They're going to ask you for a good faith certificate that the uncertainty of current economic conditions make the loan request necessary to support ongoing operations, that you will use the loan proceeds, the borrower, to retain workers and maintain payroll, or make mortgage, lease, and utility payments. So that or is important. Uh, you can use it for payroll, but also for your mortgage, lease, and utility payments, which can add up for a lot of businesses. 
those fixed costs while you're shut down. Um, and you cannot have a pending application for a duplicative loan. So you can't be already in the process for one and getting this other one. And they say if you're a sole proprietor, independent contractor, they're going to look for certain documents, filing documents, such as payroll tax filings, 1099, MISC, and income and expenses. So if you go for this, you need to have some paperwork showing it. But the, the other big upside here is a personal guarantee is not required for the loan. So they're not making you sign personally and pledge your house against repaying the loan. No collateral is re required. So you don't have to pledge anything for this type of loan. So here's the other takeaway. How much can you borrow? They can be up to two and a half times the borrower's average monthly payroll costs, not to exceed 10 million. So if you have uh, employees and you know your payroll, you can just fact that by 2.5 months is the max you can apply for. And then they go through a list of factors here on how to calculate that salary, wage, commissions, or similar compensation, payment of cash tips. So think about restaurants, things like that, payment for vacation, family, medical uh, sick leave, so you can use it for benefits, payment of retirement benefit, payment of taxes assessed on the compensation of the employee. So it's really good, quite broad here. But then again, I wanted to zero in on this part for sole proprietors, independent contractors, and self-employed because a lot of times those people get um, excluded from these type of loans. It says the sum of payments of any compensation to for the income of a sole proprietor or independent contractor that is a wage, commission, income, or net earnings from self-employment or similar compensation that is in an amount not more than $100,000 per year. So if you're paying yourself prorated for the covered period. So if you're paying yourself more than $100,000 per year, they're not going to go above that amount, okay, during this crisis for the loan. But you can still pay yourself from this loan. And then it goes through some things that are excluded from the payroll cost. But finally, the key thing is this loan forgiveness. So if you follow the process, a borrower is eligible for loan forgiveness equal to the amount the borrower spent on the following items during the eight week period, beginning on the date of the origination of the loan. So if you go apply for this, you are eligible to have up to eight weeks uh, forgiven, which is about that two and a half month window there. If you think about it, well, two months would be roughly eight weeks, so 10 weeks, but you can have up to eight weeks. And you can, uh, eligible to have forgiven payroll costs using the same definition they use to determine loan eligibility, interest on the mortgage obligation incurred in the ordinary course of business, rent on a leasing agreement, or payments on utilities, electricity, gas, water, transportation, telephone, or internet. For borrowers with tipped employees, uh, additional wages paid to those employees. The loan forgiveness cannot exceed the principal. So you can borrow the money and then apply for the loan forgiveness for that eight week period. Uh, now the amount of forgiveness can be reduced if there's a reduction in the number of employees or a reduction of greater than 25% wages paid to employees. So if you're using the money to keep employees and then you reduce them, they can reduce that loan forgiveness. But again, let's go back to your self-employed carpenter. If you're the only wages you're paying and you don't lay yourself off, it's potentially that you could apply and get the loan forgiveness for that eight week period. So essentially, this uh, small business loan program can turn into a grant if you follow all the guidelines and do everything right. So this four page handout, I give credit to the chamber. It's really very good. And I recommend you take a look at it in the link I post on this video and think about whether it makes sense for you or your business. And we're early into this shutdown now, but uh, I know they're planning the, at least the federal guidelines to extend it several weeks, 
So you might want to be looking at this this week as an option for you because once our local lenders are set up to administer the program, they're talking about making it very easy to go down there and get this loan started. And if you can use it to keep those valued treasured employees uh, paid during this time, that would be a really, really great thing for our community and our business community. So I wanted to quickly make people aware of this guide. Take a look at it. Um, if you have questions, discuss them with your attorney, tax advisor, your lender. I'm sure the banks are just going to be getting this going this week. So, but have your questions prepared and it could be a great option for many small businesses in our community. So thanks for watching. Stay safe. Be well, and we'll see you next time.